Well, good evening, family and friends. I am Minister John Pickens, and I would like to thank you all for joining me this evening for this Mid-Wednesday Word of God. Amen. I have to begin by giving honor to God and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for saving me from my sins and commissioning me to preach his word to his people all around the world. Amen. Now, tonight's text and scripture will be coming from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. That's the book of Matthew, chapter 14, uh, verses 15 through 21. Amen. I will begin at verse 1. Jesus feeds 5,000. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said unto them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, we have here only five loaves and two fish. But he said, bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass and he took the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And then the disciples gave to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled, and they all took up 12 baskets full of fragments that remained. Now those that had eaten were totaling 5,000 men, women, and children. Amen. May the Lord bless both the hearers and doers of his word. Amen. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, blessed Lord, for bringing us to this Wednesday evening, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, first and foremost, to ask for forgiveness, Lord. We want to ask for forgiveness, Lord, and thanks, Heavenly Father, for bringing us through all of our transgressions through the week. For none of us, Heavenly Father, are perfect. None of us, no, not one. So we must all look to you, Heavenly Father, every single day of our lives. And we thank you for bringing us here uh, for this fellowship to receive the word that you are imparting, Lord, through my mouth. And I pray today, Lord, that the words flowing from my mouth are your words, Lord, to go forth uh, to your people, Lord, to uh, impart deep and plant deep within our hearts, spirits and minds, Lord, to bring forth the strong trees and fruit that you call forth to bring forth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray today. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. We thank you all again, brothers and sisters, for joining us for the word of God this evening. Now, let us take our mind off of everyone and everything and let us place it on Jesus Christ this evening. Amen. Now, I'd like to speak with you a few moments uh, this evening with the message to play the hand that you are given or to put it another way, play the hand that you are dealt in life. Amen. Now, Jesus Christ is the son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He came through 42 generations uh, through the line of King David through the tribe of Judah. Amen. His mission would be to live, die, and to rise again for the remission of sins of all of mankind, for all of us. Now, at this particular junction um, in his ministry, his ministry was in full swing, full operation. Uh, more importantly, Jesus had received news at this particular time uh, that his um, cousin, John the Baptist, had been beheaded by Herod. Uh, Herod beheaded him for speaking out against his marriage to his brother's wife. Now, after hearing this news, Jesus came across a multitude. And after spending some time with that multitude and healing them, he had decided that he needed to go be by himself for a while um, to a deserted place. Now, we see in the scriptures oftentimes that uh, when Jesus is spending extended periods of time around people, uh, the social crowds and the, you know, the areas, he needed to go be by himself for a while to go intercede and to meditate, to pray. Amen. With the father. Now, this particular instance, uh, as they were going out, as Jesus was going out into the desert, his disciples followed him. The multitude of people also followed him far out. And this is where our scripture takes place this evening. Now, we must understand something that sometimes uh, our duty, sometimes our mission calls at the most inopportune times. Verse 15 tells us when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Now, Jesus and his disciples were no doubt tired and worn down from the long day's events. And Jesus, again, had just received news on top of all of this that his cousin, John the Baptist, had just been beheaded. So no doubt he needed his space and time to be alone. Now, as any person would do in this situation, uh, Jesus decided to be by himself. He left uh, to go into a deserted place for a while. Of course, his disciples would follow him. But in this particular case, uh, also, a, also a multitude of people followed him out. Now, how many of us have been in this situation before at various times of our life? As soon as you take your time and you uh, make calendar, make room on your calendar for some R&R, for some rest, the phone rings. On your vacation for some much needed R&R, your supervisor calls and tells you that you need to be in the office. It's happened to all of us at one point or another. Now, the scripture is showing us here that oftentimes our calling in life, our mission, 
will happen and come about at the most inopportune times, just as it's doing right here. Verse 16 tells us, but Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Now, imagine not only having to deal with the crowd of people on in your moment of downtime, uh, but now you've been tasked with feeding them, feeding them food. Now, keep in mind, we're not simply talking about a small uh, few folks here or a very small crowd. We're talking here, the scripture says specifically that there were over 5,000 men, women, and children. 5,000. Now, it's one thing to bill your family uh, for dinner every night, meaning uh, you pay for everything every night, or every once in a while you pay for dinner for you and your friends every once in a while. But for 5,000 people, uh, that's completely on a different level. Now, obviously, the disciples felt the same way many of us do. Uh, they wanted to send the crowd home and tell them there's nothing we can do now. Uh, but you see, Jesus, amen. Jesus not only saw their need, but he sought to meet it. So you see, brothers and sisters, when mankind wants to get you out of their way uh, or out of your way, uh, when your most desperate times of need, we must understand that Jesus always knows your needs and he is always uh, going to be there to see, to meet that need. Amen. Now, uh, Jesus does something very unusual. He does something very interesting here. Um, he tells them, do not send them away. And then he tells them, you give them something to eat. Yes, he told the disciples to give them something to eat. Uh, uh, and that not that he would give them something to eat, but that the disciples would. Now, Jesus knew that the disciples were shorthanded at that particular time. Verse 17 tells us, and they said to him, we have only five loaves and two fish. Now, facing those hungry crowds with the prospect of feeding 5,000 hungry men and uh, women and children uh, would leave all of us nerves, every single one of us. Uh, oftentimes, we're trying to do our very best, amen, to feed ourselves and our families, let alone 5,000 people. Now, even though Jesus knew uh, the disciples were shorthanded, they felt shorthanded, Jesus still told them to use what they already have. Uh, he told, they told him that they only have five loaves and two fish. Now, how in the world were they going to feed 5,000 people with just five loaves and two fish? Now, Jesus is reminding not just them, but all of us here, here uh, that the scripture, uh, no, matter how little, no matter how little you have, rather, uh, that you actually have, compared to someone else, you have a whole lot more than you think. Uh, many of us, right, we're trying to every single day scrap up what we have, but believe it or not, the small meal that you have tonight is a feast compared to someone else around the world perhaps even in your own city and town. Now, and brothers and sisters, again, there are people so poor in the world that uh, many of us, we, we hate the fact that we have to live in a very small house or a very small apartment, but the very apartment that you have, that very small apartment, that studio would be considered a mansion to many people living around the world, amen. Now, there are people so poor in the world that what we consider here in our nation living from paycheck to paycheck, that would be, uh, even though how small the paycheck is, many would consider that winning the lottery in certain areas around the world, amen. No matter, we must always be thankful for what we have, even if it is very little. Now, there are many times when our desires, we all desire to, to accomplish more, to acquire more, to do more. In fact, that's the American dream. Uh, the American dream is to continue to rise, to become the best version of yourself um, and engage in the pursuit of happiness. That's something that we're all trying to do. Now, although it's not inherently evil to try to do that, the Lord always wants us to know, uh, to have perspective to always be thankful for what you have, even in times of your lack. Now, Jesus here in this ministry, he took the initiative. He took the initiative and used the cards that were given. Verse uh, 18 tells us, he said, bring them here to me, bring the fragments to him. Now, Jesus then told the disciples to bring him the five loaves and the two fish. And uh, Jesus is showing us that you have to play the hand that you have. You have to play the hand that you are given. Amen. Now, many of us, uh, if not all of us, if we're honest with ourselves, uh, we will probably feel somewhat similar. Uh, we all wish, right, with that we all had more wealth, more education, more, more height, more, uh, more weight, less weight, uh, better relationships, uh, family, friends, more titles, uh, titles of stature, uh, and just in general, just, just more things. But again, nothing is wrong with in, in and of itself with trying to increase oneself and improve oneself, um, as any of us would understand. That's the way that, that we should be wired, right? We don't want to just stay uh, where we are. We want to continue to improve ourselves. But the Lord is constantly reminding us in his word that there's nothing wrong with utilizing what you have. You can serve the Lord right where you are right now with the amount of talents and gifts right where you are. Now, uh, again, uh, with 5,000 people waiting, uh, with hungry stomachs waiting for food, Jesus showed the disciples uh, that he did not have to debate uh, or time to complain. He didn't have time for that. He didn't have enough resources, so we have to utilize what we have. Now, the first thing he did was Jesus, he gave thanks. He gave thanks for what they already had. Verse 19 says, he then commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass 
And he took the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to heaven. He blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples. Amen. The disciples then gave to the multitudes. Now, again, instead of complaining, fussing and complaining about uh, having uh, what they needed by way of food or not having what they needed by way of food, the first thing Jesus did again was give thanks for the little that they had. Now, we see here today, there are many arguments amongst ourselves about money and the lack of resources, and it is tearing down households, it is tearing down personal relationships, it's tearing down personal lives. Now, none of us, including myself, have been without blame in this area. We we all seek to have more. We've all had arguments uh, at one point or another because of those lack of resources. But the word of God is ministering to all of us here today. Now, uh, the world here, uh, the word here, again, is telling us something very different than what we are used to, brothers and sisters. Now, Jesus is telling us uh, that before we end our relationships, before we fight it out over money every single day, we must first always give thanks for the little that we have. Now, some of us may say, well, Brother John, if I give thanks to God every time that I'm in need, I'm going to constantly be giving God thanks every single day because I'm constantly uh, in need every single day. Well, that's okay, brothers and sisters. The scripture tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 6. 16 through 18, the Bible tells us to rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for your life in Christ Jesus. Amen. He wants us to constantly give thanks. Amen. Give thanks in your lack. Give thanks in your plenty. Give thanks in season and out of season. Amen. Always give thanks to the Father. Amen. Now, before God, uh, before we ask for more, amen, we have to be thankful for what we have. The scripture is not uh, simply telling us that we should never ask for more or that we're never going to need anything else. Instead, the scripture is telling us before we ask for more, always remember to give thanks to God first for the little that you have. Now, uh, we don't always have to focus on what we don't have, brothers and sisters. We can always be thankful, amen, thankful uh, just for the little that we have. Now, uh, they did not waste any extra uh, food that the Lord gave them. Verse 20 tells us, though, they all ate and were filled, and they gave up 12 baskets full of fragments that remained. So you see, brothers and sisters, God always uses, amen, a little, to accomplish a lot more than we could ever imagine. Amen. God used one man and one woman to populate the entire earth where we're looking at over now, seven to eight billion people and counting worldwide. God gave us his only begotten son uh, as a lamb to sacrifice for all of humanity. It only took one. Amen. Bless his holy name today. In fact, all of us at this point uh, or at, during that point in, in the word, uh, they're no longer needed to be all of the sacrifices of animals, no longer all of the offerings of gold and silver and precious stones by the Israelites in the days of Moses and, and Abraham. Amen. All of those sacrifices fail to do what one sacrifice did. Amen. And it's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Out of all of Saul's Israelite army, when they faced the Philistines, God took one shepherd boy with five smooth stones and a slingshot amen, to accomplish more than all of Saul's mighty men could not. God used uh, Nehemiah, a cupbearer. Uh, Nehemiah was not an engineer uh, with a degree, amen. He was a cupbearer to the king Xerxes, amen, to accomplish more that had been done at any point in that given time. The book of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19 says, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He's telling us, brothers and sisters, he can bring forth rivers or oases in the desert. Yes, he can make something out of nothing. That's how he created everything. Amen. He started from darkness and he spoke into the darkness and created the light. He created everything. Amen. Now, of course, this defies all of our science and reasoning. Uh, all of our logic and reasoning that we have tells us that this cannot be done. How can you take five loaves and two fish and feed 5,000 people? Now, we live in a time and a place where we uh, we see more uh, credentials. We have to have more credentials in order to be considered legitimate. However, it's almost as if God is telling us, yes, that's how the world operates. But he's telling us through his word, the less we have, the less, the oftentimes the less we have, the more he can do. Because we will, we will rely on him more. Amen. We have to give him the credit and not ourselves and not our resume, not our talents and gifts. You see, as soon as we decrease, then he can increase. Amen. And in our multiply, amen, he will continue to multiply us. Now you see the multitude had been fed by faith. They were not just being fed by five fish and two loaves. They were, I'm sorry, five loaves and two fish. They were being fed by faith. Amen. Verse 21 tells us now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides the women and children. Now Jesus took what little the disciples had and showed them. By first of all, giving thanks, and number two, plan with the ham that you're given. 
amen, God could fulfill more, amen, through his will and faith. Now, without faith, as we know, it is impossible to please God. So the Lord brought Moses and the Hebrews out of Egypt to the Red Sea uh, that had not been parted yet. There was no bridge waiting. There was just the water there. There was the water on the front and in the back was uh, Pharaoh's closing in army. Now, similarly, Jesus did not tell the disciples. He didn't tell the disciples as they were going out into the desert that day to bring more money and more food because we're going to have people following us. He knew the people would follow and he knew exactly how much the disciples had on them. In fact, Jesus told the disciples from the very beginning when he commissioned them to bring very little. Don't bring a whole lot of money. Don't bring a whole lot of supplies with them. Uh, not to worry about what they will eat or drink because today, amen, not to worry about tomorrow. Today has enough worries into itself. So we must decrease so that he can increase. Now, the Bible tells us very clearly, amen, the just shall live by faith, Romans chapter one, verses 17. We will oftentimes find ourselves in situations, brothers and sisters, where we cannot rely on our education. We're not going to be able to rely on our credentials, our networking, or our net worth. Amen. When all else fails, we must know and believe that Jesus Christ will never fail. Amen. When moving the mountains of life, and there are going to be many for all of us, as there already have been, uh, we must always remember that uh, it only takes faith the size of a mustard seed, brothers and sisters, at our disposal. Amen. Just as you just said, to cast those mountains out into the sea. Now, as we're going to see uh, further in the scriptures, in Matthew chapter 15, Jesus feeds another multitude. This time he feeds 4,000. Now, uh, verse 32 says, now, Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they have continued with me for three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry lest they faint on the way. Now, they had been following Jesus for three days. He knew they were hungry. Amen. You see, the Lord works in ways that we don't quite understand. He knew the people would be hungry and he knew the disciples would not have very much. So then the disciples again said to him, uh, we could not get enough bread in the wilderness to fill such a great multitude. Jesus tells them, how many loaves do you have? And they said, seven. We have seven loaves and a few little fish. So he commanded the multitudes again to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the two fish and gave thanks. He broke them and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples then gave them to the multitude. Amen. So they all ate and were filled. And they all took up seven large baskets full of the fragments that were left. Seven large baskets that were left. Now, those that ate were 4,000 men, women, and children. Now, he then sent the multitudes uh, away uh, to get into the boat, and then he came to the region of Magdala. Amen. Now, as we can see later on in the scriptures, he is doing the exact same thing. He is feeding, amen, a multitude of 4,000 with just a little. Now, there are similarities between the two instances where the Lord fed the multitudes, but there are differences as well. Things for us to all learn from. Now, first of all, both were very large crowds numbering in the thousands. Amen. The first numbering 5,000, the second crowd numbering 4,000. Now, in both instances, the disciples were caught shorthanded on purpose. Uh, in both cases, again, the disciples only had some loaves and some fish, but Jesus knew it. And when we run low on fuel, brothers and sisters, that is when we must call upon the name of the Lord for our increase. Amen. Now, the disciples, uh, they brought, they obeyed, they brought Jesus their little that they had, and in both cases, they both continue to do that. Now, he always wants us to rely on him for the increase, brothers and sisters. Amen. It's always going to be tempted to try to have uh, more than what we need, but we're always going to be in a position where we're going to have to call upon his name. Amen. Now, Jesus gave thanks to the Father for the little that they had before it became much. Romans chapter 8, verse 34 tells us, says that Jesus is in turn our intercessor to the Father. You see, in both instances, he prayed to the Father. He didn't tell them to do it. He prayed, amen. He is our intercessor, brothers and sisters. We must never forget that. Now, before the food had been multiplied, Jesus gave thanks to the Father on behalf of all of the people. Jesus is constantly, right now, making intercession to the Father on our behalf, amen. Now, again, there are differences, just as we said about some of the similarities. There are many differences. Now, first and foremost, the first multitude was larger than the second. The first multitude was notably 5,000. The second multitude, notably 4,000. The scripture says in uh, the book of Matthew chapter 14 that, the, again, the uh, crowd numbered in 5,000, whereas the second crowd numbered in 4,000. Now, Jesus, he used this time a smaller crowd. Amen. He had uh, a smaller crowd to feed, but still very little. The scripture says in Matthew 15 that they had seven loaves and a few little fish which is what Jesus used to feed the 4,000. Whereas in the previous chapter, they had five loaves 
and two fish which ended up feeding 5,000. So if you look very carefully, Jesus used even less food the second time, amen, to do even more, amen, and he will do the same in our lives, amen. You don't uh, have to have always the best resources and supplies, brothers and sisters, to do your best, amen. You don't need to have a full cupboard to cook a full course meal. Uh, it would be nice to have everything you need every single time lined up in a row and in order, but that's just not reality. That's just not how things work. And in his ministry, uh, Jesus was not only feeding the multitudes, he was also teaching the disciples at the same time. It was a teaching moment uh, that no amount of resources can replace trusting in God. No matter how much money you have, brothers and sisters, I don't care if you're a multi-billionaire, amen, or whether you have multiple zeros behind your name, you are always going to need your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, and again, an abundance to, to really emphasize this, an abundance of materialism does not always mean an abundance of outcome. No amount of money, food, or resources can guarantee you anything. Sure, it may give you uh, personal uh, mental security, but there's no guarantee of anything in this life, brothers and sisters. Health and safety and security all come from the Lord. Amen. Whether it's for you, your family, or your friends. Amen. What Our, our, our safety and security every single day is a uh, uh, it's depending upon one, amen, one entity, and that's our Lord and Savior, amen. Now, uh, some of us, again, uh, we wish we had more resources at our disposal, again, which is fine, uh, but all that really means is we have more opportunities to stay healthy. We have more opportunities to be secure, but it is no guarantee, brothers and sisters. So in closing, uh, the word is telling us here today uh, that we have to be faithful over a few things in order to be ruler over many. Uh, we sometimes have to ask ourselves, can God trust us with five loaves and two fish? Uh, can he trust us with the seven loaves and a few fish? Um, if not, how can he trust us with the overflow to fill to, to feed thousands, amen, of people? Amen. His message today is very clear. No matter, again, how little you have, brothers and sisters, you must always play the hand that you are given. Amen. We, and in doing so, um, our Lord and Savior will manifest himself in your life in ways that you nor I nor any of us could ever imagine. Amen. Bless his holy name today. Um, if you do not know Jesus or you seek to have and you seek to have a relationship with him, please, you can have one today right where you are right now. Uh, please don't wait until tomorrow. Tomorrow is never guaranteed to any of us. Amen. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Heavenly Lord, for this, this bread of life that you have bestowed upon us this Wednesday night evening. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for protecting us on our journeys, Lord, to work and from work. We thank you for protecting our family members, our friends, and we thank you, Heavenly Father, for taking the little that we have at many times and multiplying it, Lord, to feed thousands. So we pray today, Heavenly Father, for the faith that we need to take the hand that we've been given in life, Lord, and to multiply it, to let you multiply, Lord, to let you do your work in our life as you have called for. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray today. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you again, brothers and sisters, for joining me. I am Minister John Pickens, and I want to thank you for joining me for this midweek Wednesday Word of God. Amen. Have a blessed evening.